As everything reopens, uh, we're all likely to start spending again. But if you need to borrow some money, where's the safest place to do that? Well, Martin Lewis joins us now in the studio to tell us more. First, though, um, he wants to talk about the confusion over international travel. Uh, we were talking about it with Simon Calder earlier. Um, and so, uh, so y you say everyone's got it wrong. Well, yeah, I was watching Prime Minister's Question Time the other day and let's just say I wasn't that impressed with the structures of their answers. Let me try and explain. What you have to understand is there are three different things you need to look at for every country. The first one is the traffic light system that people know about. The traffic light system is not about whether you can go abroad. It's about if you do go abroad, what you have to do when you come home. Mm -hmm. So you have green, uh, you have to take your test, but you don't quarantine. Amber, quarantine for up to 10 days at home, red, 10 days in a hotel and you have to pay £1,750 as a sink for a single person. That's what the traffic light system officially does. There is then the foreign office advisory for each destination. And that is actually the legal advice from the government about whether you can travel or not. Now, the government's saying don't go on holiday in an amber zone. Well, that's not what it's legally saying. The foreign office advisory says that. Now, it has to be said most amber and red countries, the advice is against all but essential travel or against all travel. And that would legally, if you had travel insurance that covered you, mean you'd get a payout, or if you had a package holiday, mean you could argue that you don't have to go and you should get a refund. Mm -hmm. But not all amber countries have that advisory. The best example, Spain, the Foreign Office advice is against all but essential travel and it's amber. The Canary Islands is amber, but the Foreign Office says you can go. So legally, you can go when you can always go, but legally there's no warning against going to the Canary Islands. The Foreign Office is deeming that safe and that is the one that dictates under travel policies and travel insurance. So you and affects your insurance. Uh, and affects your insurance. Yeah. But you can go, but you will have to quarantine when you come back mm -hmm. because of the traffic lights. So you have to see those as separate. Traffic lights for coming home. Foreign Tra offices for going. And then you've got the third one, which is the overseas countries' rules. Oh. So if we take the green zone countries, Portugal will let people in with a PCR test. Iceland will let people in if they're double vaccinated. Gibraltar will let anyone in. Uh, Australia won't let you in to go on holiday at all, even though it's on the green list. Israel will ignore the horrendous conflict going on there. Says if you're part of a group, you may be allowed to go in an official book travel group, but you can't go in as an individual. So those are the three separate and distinct things you need to look at. And people are conflating them into one, but they're not one. And when you're booking, you need to look at all three, mm -hmm. I'm afraid. Okay. Hopefully that helps a little. I know it's confusing, it does. but that's the structure. It actually makes it less confusing if you separate the three things. Um, right, let's talk about money <laughs> <laughs> now and talking about borrowing and what the best ways are to borrow. Why should we be thinking about this? Well, it's just because people are, look, Never borrow unless you need to. If you're going to borrow, make sure it's planned, it's budgeted for, you've worked out that you can afford the repayments, only do it for a needed one-off item. Willy-nilly borrowing is never a good thing to do. But right now, as we come further out of lockdown, people are starting to spend again. And when people spend again, they borrow. And this massive explosion over the last year and a half in buy now, pay later, means many people are borrowing without consciously being aware that they're borrowing. Mm. So the reason I wanted to do this is to say, if you're going to borrow, you need to make sure you're borrowing in the right way and you really need it and work out which the right way is for you mm -hmm. and which the wrong way is for you. So what are the pros and cons of the, of the options? Well, let's start with credit cards, shall we? Credit cards, the most obvious one, they're the cheapest, they're interest free. You get this Section 75 protection, which means the card company is jointly liable with the retailer. So if something goes, the company goes bust, you can get the money back from the credit card firm. It's regulated. So if you have a problem, you can go to the free financial ombudsman and you can check beforehand whether you're eligible using an eligibility checker, mm -hmm. which is what I would be doing. Negatives, easy to overspend. The repayments aren't fixed, so you can pay very little. You should always try and pay your debts off as quickly as possible. So the fact that you can pay very little means the interest keeps racking up for a very long time and not everyone will be accepted. But right now you can get 20 months or more 0% with Sainsbury's, Lloyd's, Marks and Spencer's card, although go through an eligibility checker. So let's, let's take that as our benchmark. Interest-free borrowing with protection, regulated acceptance is your issue. Make sure you pay enough. Mm. Next. Loans. Loans. Yeah, so loans, bigger borrowing, and you can borrow for longer. longer. That's a plus and a negative, right? The fact you can borrow more is good mm -hmm. and bad. The repayments are fixed here. So for people who lack some financial self-discipline, which many people do, when you get a loan, you have to pay a set amount each month. 
So therefore, you know you're going to pay it off and you're going to pay it off in the time that you need to, which is actually good structured management for individuals, even though it's less freedom. Again, you can check it's eligible uh, if you're eligible, but it is harder to get a big loan. Problems here, no Section 75, the borrowing is big and how you're going to get accepted and it's not interest free. Mm -hmm. Loans are the cheapest loans, 2.8%. Most people will be paying near the 10% level. So loans are good for big one-off purchases if you can get it cheaply and you need structured repayments. Uh, what about um, buy now, pay later? You mentioned that before. Now, when I do the pros here, you're going to go, this is fantastic. Mm. It's easy. Buy now, pay later, I should doesn't say. doesn't sound like a loan, does it? No. When you dress it up. This like is that. the thing, when you pay online now, virtually everywhere, it says, hey, spread the cost over three months. You know, Klarna, Clearpay and others are the ones offering this. It's exploded. And it's interest free. It's easy to get because you're basically not being credit scored. You know, you repay it over three months. What's the problem? I shall tell you the problem with buy now, pay later and why I was one of those leading the charge to get it regulated. Uh, which it will be regulated, but it isn't regulated yet, which means if you have a problem with it, and people do, you can't go to the Ombudsman. There's no independent ah. adjudication yet. Here's the issue. Do you know why buy now, pay later is free? No. I shall tell you why. Because it massively increases sales for retailers. So the money is made from the retailer, not from the customer, because buy now, later is a huge pump to get people to buy more. Why is that a bad thing? Why is that a bad thing? Because what, let me translate that. What we are doing is we've got a payment system that encourages people to buy, buy things that they can't necessarily when afford, don't, don't money, necessarily yeah. need, and they're doing it through lending, mm. through a loan-based system. You don't, I go back to my initial point. It's a really important question because you have to work it through. Don't borrow unless you need to. So people are using buy now, pay later to get stuff they don't need, and it's a form of borrowing, which is why it scares me. Once it's regulated... Fine. I, I, fine. I still, though... Don't do buy now, pay later, unless you need to borrow. You are always better not to get involved in that. If you don't pay, you can have a black mark on your credit file with some of the firms. Mm. You may not get the goods and then you've got a debt that you don't owe and it's not regulated so you can't chase it through. I'm not anti it. I think once it's regulated, it's good. But I think people do it flippantly. Yeah. And flippant borrowing is Dangerous. flipping bad borrowing. <laughs> um, listen, you're coming back for a phone in a yeah, bit, yeah. aren't you? So stay put, we'll try and find you a bit of cake Thank you. in the meantime.